first example is going to be pretty straightforward. So we're going to evaluate the surface integral. Oops, not f dot dr, that's a line integral. For f equal to xz i hat over the surface of a closed cylinder. So that's going to be including top and bottom. Given by x squared plus y squared equal 4. And the height given by 0 less than or equal to z less than or equal to 7, I guess. Okay, so just to sketch what we're thinking about. Oops, oriented outwards. So our surface is going to be this cylinder that has its base in the xy plane when z equals 0 and its height up at 7. And its radius is 2. And we're told that this is an outward oriented surface. So normal vectors everywhere are pointing that way. On the top of the cylinder, it's pointing that way. On the bottom of the cylinder, it's pointing that way. So those are normal vectors that point um, out of the surface of the cylinder. So f equal to xc i hat is continuous. Again, this is continuous thing is really not going to matter for you in, in our class, but just so you know. Um, and then our surface S is closed. So together those things tell us we can use divergence theorem. And honestly, whenever you can use divergence theorem, I think you should because in my opinion, it's easy. So, Since I've decided I can use divergence theorem, I'm going to compute the divergence, del dot f. And um, in case that's rusty for us, that's d dx a d dy b plus d d z c for f, a vector field with x component a, y component b, z component c. So for us, that's just going to be d dx of xz plus ddy0, ddz0. Um, so hopefully we've seen quite a bit at this point that when vector fields like don't have all three components, you can still compute divergence and curl, just you get a bunch of zeros. Um, and so for us, ddx of xc, z is a constant as far as x is concerned, ddx of x is 1, so we just get z plus 0 plus 0. So that's our divergence. And then our region R is going to be the volume inside the cylinder. So I've computed divergence, and now I'm thinking about I'm going to have to set up a volume integral um, with three components inside my surface. So R has to be the volume that fills up this cylinder surface, um, all this stuff in here. But we all are really great at cylindrical coordinates at this point. So we can see that that is a full circle all the way around for the uh, cross sections of the cylinder. And with radius 2, I've got that. And then um, I ran out of space right there, so I'll go ahead and write it right here. They even tell us 
that z falls between 0 and 7. So height bottom to top is 0 to 7. And at this point, I have all the components I need to make a divergence theorem um, conversion. I've got my region R. I've got my del dot F. And if I plug it all in, I'm just going to have a triple integral to evaluate. So the thing we were asked to do was a surface integral, but we can go ahead and say this is a triple integral where del dot F we said is Z. And we're going to integrate it over this region. And so I'm going to do dz, dr, d theta, where my z went from 0 to 7, my r went from 0 to 2, and my theta went from 0 to 2 pi. And then since I'm using cylindrical coordinates, I know that I need an r right here for my um, r, dr, d theta. I just moved it inside where the z is. Okay, so let's see. First, I'm going to integrate z with respect to z. So the integral of z with respect to z is 1 half z squared, and I take that from 0 to 7. I didn't have to convert this. Um, there was that warning. Convert del dot f if necessary. We're using cylindrical coordinates, which permit the variable z, so we're fine. Um, 0 to 2, r, and then this just becomes 49 over 2 minus 0. So I'm going to pull that constant out. And then um, we could go ahead and evaluate the rest of this integral by hand. It wouldn't be that hard, but real quick, 2 pi, 0 to 2. Remember, r d r d theta is just our dA for polar coordinates. So this is really just find the area over the circle that goes from 0 to 2 pi in angle and 0 to 2 in radius. So I know that this is just going to give me my pi r squared. So pi 2 squared. Uh, which is 49 times 2 times pi. I don't really know what 49 times 2 is. I just canceled the 4 out with the 2 on bottom to become that 2 right there. Um, if this part like is still not really clicking for you, I think that recognizing when you can take area um, instead of a double integral or volume instead of a triple integral is really helpful. But if you hadn't recognized this and you went ahead and you did your one half r squared from zero to two, and then you multiplied that by two pi, um, hopefully you can see that's just going to become r squared times pi, which is exactly where we ended up. So. If you did this the um, long way or just straightforward way, you would get to the same answer in the end.